The Argonian people have, throughout Tamrielic history, been perhaps the most misunderstood, vilified, and reviled of all the sentient races. Yet, those who have taken the time to experience Argonian culture have gained a greater appreciation for this noble and beautiful people. A quote from Brendan the Persistent Argonians, or in their native tongue, the Saxlil, are a reptilian race native to the southeastern province of Black Marsh. Saxlil roughly translates to people of the root in their native tongue of gel. The Argonians have always been a mysterious and isolated beast race as compared to much of the rest of Tamriel, and have always intrigued scholars for their tribalistic and unique culture. Most races refer to Argonians as lizards or lizardfolk, and these terms can even be viewed as insulting. Argonians are incredibly skilled in guerrilla warfare, and have been known to defend the territory and borders of Black Marsh incredibly well because of this. Argonians typically live as long as humans do. One scholar noted that the Argonians of Black Marsh have some of the richest and most beautiful culture of all the Tamrielic races. However, this scholar, after visiting and traveling deeper into Black Marsh territory, mysteriously vanished without a trace. Black Marsh is the homeland of the Argonians, located in the southeast of Tamriel. Much of its landscape is dense, dark, humid, boggy, and almost jungle-like terrain. The Argonians have adapted well in Black Marsh, and have resided there for more than documented history. Black Marsh is also home to the native Hiss trees, and these trees are not encountered outside of Black Marsh. Black Marsh is often avoided by outsiders because of the danger it poses, from getting lost in its vast forests and marshes, to getting killed by its dangerous plants and animals, and even encountering some of the most hostile of Argonian tribes. Mostly, when other countries have taken interest in Black Marsh, it is mostly for acquiring slaves. Other attempts of commercial ventures such as agricultural or colonial have often resulted in failure. Compared to other races of Tamriel, the Argonians of Black Marsh are widely isolated and uninvolved in a lot of affairs outside of Black Marsh, and every attempt to fully integrate Black Marsh into the Empire has never lasted for long periods of time. Most Argonians dwell in the inland waterways and marshes of the south. Very little roads exist in Black Marsh, and means of travel are often preferred by boat. Most roads that do get constructed are immediately engulfed by the wilderness of the environment. Not only is road travel the most hazardous form of travel in Black Marsh, but often nearly impossible. Black Marsh is home to thousands of unique species, including intelligent and sentient species aside from the Argonians and the Hist. Some native species are the Wamasu, were lions and were crocodiles, many different species of lizards and other reptiles, and deadly feathered serpents, along with the many different tribes and forms of Argonians with its varied subspecies. Argonians, as well as the Khajiit, are often victims of prejudice and slavery. Most Argonians who live in the depths of Black Marsh are often protected by the harsh wilderness from invasion or slavery. Although Argonians who live on the outskirts and outer edges of Black Marsh are much more susceptible to being abducted for slavery. Other than the Dunmer of Morwind, the rest of Tamriel has been seen as neutral forces to the Argonians, and they hold very little opinion of most provinces. Argonians are typically reptilian in their appearance, but also have been observed to have qualities of fish, amphibians, and even birds. Behind Argonians' ears are a set of gills that Argonians are able to breathe with. Argonians use the same method of swimming as a tadpole or eelwood, 
by using their large tail and body to propel them in the water. Many Argonians have horns or feathers atop their head, and are often decorated with jewelry or colorful garments. Argonians are hatched from eggs, rather than the usual birth that the rest of Tamriel delivers. Ancient cave paintings in Black Marsh depict beings that resemble tree features, more so than any of the features that modern Argonians are equipped with. Argonians range in appearance. While most are incredibly reptilian, some are rather more human-looking, and this can be determined by what kind of hyssop they are drinking from as hatchlings. One important tradition in Argonian culture is their naming day, a day known as Chukase. This day is set in the Argonian season of the Hisduka, or to the rest of Tamriel's second seed. It is unknown whether Argonians are named by a designated shaman or tribe member, or if the Hiss determines their name. Argonians are gifted with either a name native in their language of gel, such as Bijum Ito, or a Tamrielic name that can resemble their noted attributes as a hatchling, such as fangs like ice. Occasionally, an Argonian's Tamrielic name is a direct translation of their name in gel, and is often used for outsiders who want to refer to that Argonian, as the Tamrielic name is much easier to pronounce than their native gel name. Although, occasionally, their Tamrielic name may have nothing to do with their native gel name. Argonians have incredibly different personalities as compared to the other races of Tamriel, and to many outsiders, they often believe that Argonians are not capable of producing emotion or have any identifiable personality. However, this is clearly not true and is simply a misunderstanding between cultures and ways of expression. Much of Argonian expression is exhibited through the understanding of the hist and the very subtle gestures and social cues exhibited between Argonians and is incredibly alien and difficult to grasp to outside cultures. Although one notable emotion that can be observed easily by outsiders is that of anger, through obvious teeth bearing and narrowed eyes. Argonians can develop complex and deep relationships between each other and those they deem as friends, and are very protective of their tribe and allies. Argonians, as perplexing and strange as their customs may be to outsiders, many outsiders have learned that there is indeed a reason for everything they do, such as wearing socks with external pockets filled with hot rocks to keep their tail warm, letting birds and other creatures pick at their teeth after a meal, and even filling their pillows with living and wriggling centipedes because the sensation is soothing during sleep. One thing noted about Argonians is a particular forgetfulness they exhibit. The Argonians of Black Marsh do not have many documented civil wars or internal conflicts. To the Argonians, to fight each other is to fight oneself, as they are all people of the Hist. When a problem or conflict arises, a common saying is that it is better to forget and move on. The Argonians, as well as the Bosmer, live in something known as the Orbuckle Now, in which all times of past or future are of no importance, and only the present is of any significance. Argonian wedding and mating rituals are incredibly complex and vary between tribes. Some Argonians freely choose their love, while others are required to choose from a neighboring tribe to establish relations and alliance between the two tribes. In the end, eggs are laid upon the roots of his trees and transferred to nests of sorts. Some Argonians perform as midwives to tend to the care of the eggs until they hatch. Some Argonian traditions allow the midwives to read nursery rhymes and perform songs for the eggs in the hopes of their healthy and successful hatching as not every egg laid is fertilized. In some Argonian cultures, the cosmic sign at which an Argonian hatches 
can determine their entire life, such as those hatched under the cosmic sign of the shadow, are known as shadow scales, and are trained as deadly assassins until they are given to the Dark Brotherhood as recruits. If an egg fails to hatch or is unfertilized, it eventually absorbs into the roots of the His tree. Unlike other infants across Tamriel, Argonian infants are able to walk upon hatching and do not require delicate and meticulous care as a normal infant would. Hatchlings are often fed sweets such as licorice worms. Harden his sap is also used for those who are teething. And when tickled under the chin, Argonians instinctively open their mouth. In battle, Argonians hold a great advantage if they are near water. To dispose of their enemies, the best way to do this is to drag the enemy into the water and simply drown them. During the war with the Riemann dynasty, some Argonians built forts and camps underwater to be guaranteed safety. Other than guerrilla warfare, Argonians can be quite deadly unarmed, from claws to fangs. Even the tail of an Argonian can be used to aid with balance during combat, using it to their advantage. Although Argonians are apparently cold-blooded beings, they can easily regulate their body temperatures to adjust to more colder climates if one so chooses to reside in a place like Skyrim. Many scholars believe that Argonians are capable of this due to the powerful effects of the Hissap. After many years of slavery and oppression, Argonians are typically untrusting of outsiders and strangers. However, once friendship and trust has been established, they are known to fight to the death to protect the life of their friend if they have to. Through centuries of slavery, the Argonians have time and time again rebelled against their slave masters, sometimes with success with their skills in guerrilla warfare, and other times in failure with the highly skilled magic of the Dunmer, notably the Telvanni. One race the Argonians have also had a negative view and history of are the Khajiit, strangely. Despite the belief that the only two beast folk of the continent would be close allies, this is far from the truth. Both Elsewhere and Blackmarsh have a strange mutual hatred of one another. It is the Khajiit that widely believe that it was an Argonian shaman who created the deadly Nahatan flu and elsewhere had suffered the most from this disease. Both races view each other as inferior. It is believed by scholars that if imperial rule had not been present in both countries, a war definitely would have ignited many years ago. Argonians are widely known for a variety of skills. Many Argonians choose to be mages, alchemists, warriors, and stealthy assassins. Argonians are mostly known for their skills in water. Holding one's breath underwater is not a problem to the Argonians, as they are able to breathe in it. Argonians are often master jewelry crafters, and their intricate jewelry is often sought out for in other provinces, and are quite expensive. Alchemy is also a gift to many Argonians, and even take into account the phases of the moons when they craft their master potions and poisons. Argonians are known for their immunity to poison and disease as well, and are observed to be quite adept at picking locks. It is understood that modern Argonian architecture is molded by the idea of conquering something known as the Shunate, the pain caused by holding too tightly to that which has come to pass. This concept is also called the fear of death and forgetting. Argonians don't typically build from stone, like some of the more ancient structures. Despite stone lasting for centuries compared to other building materials, Argonians believe that stone buildings remind oneself of a long-lost civilization, and the idea of collapse and abandonment as noted with the famous Zanmirs that dot most of Black Marsh's landscape. Instead, 
Argonians construct buildings that are meant to be temporary. Argonians like their clothing, often decorate their buildings in bright colors and feathers, with intricate decals and paint. Argonian weapons and armor differ between tribes, and have rapidly changed in style throughout the eras. Ancient Argonians often used volcanic glass, intricate cloth designs, leather, bone, and bronze in their clothing, armor, and weapons. Metalwork isn't quite common in Argonian culture, other than gold or bronze. The Naga of Merkmire often adorn themselves with their fallen loved one's hides, bones, teeth, and scales for use as armor or clothing. Throughout Black Marsh, and through thousands of different tribes, the arts of crafting armor and weapons vary widely, and no two tribes seem to use the same exact materials or style. Argonian food is typically that of fish and other water-dwelling creatures. Traditional Argonian beauty and medicine are usually quite foreign from other Tamrielic cultures, from pickled frog eyes to cure an upset stomach, to palm oil being used as a type of moisturizer. Nearly all Tamrielic dialects and languages descend from ancient Elnofex. However, Gel, the native language of the Argonians, is a language isolate and is derived entirely from the hist. Gel is known to have no past tense or future tense verbs, only verbs that exist in present tense. This is due to their ever-present state of mind. Although Gel is a verbal language, Argonians also often communicate non-verbally through tail movements, head movements, and other subtle bodily movements to express more emotion in the given subject. Gel is often incredibly difficult for other races to learn, specifically due to nearly impossible noises to make in the language. Sounds of hissing and clicking that are only capable of being produced by Argonians. It is widely considered a language that non-Argonians are never able to speak properly, no matter how well their vocabulary is. Gel is often considered a language that is the closest to pure thought as possible. This greatly reflects the Argonians' ability to perceive the hiss through their mind. As hard as gel is to learn for outsiders, Tamrielic is just as hard to Argonians, given the amount of verb tenses and the concept of time in the Tamrielic language. Marital traditions vary widely in Black Marsh and are known for their large ceremonies and intricateness. The wedding bands are crafted by the member who is proposing the act of marriage. Each band is coated with intricate designs that hold significant meaning to each member. The marriage ceremony is incredibly long and complex. It involves specific rituals and chants spoken in the native language of Gel. Argonians typically are organized by tribes. Each tribe has its own customs and fashion. Argonians come in many different shapes and sizes, and subraces even, similarly to the Khajiit. The term Argonian is widely used by outsiders as a general term to refer to the dominant race in Black Marsh. However, Argonians typically use Saxlil to refer to themselves. Some of the most prominent and known tribes in Black Marsh are as follows. The Adzikos Leal is a tribe in Merkmire that claims to be the sole bearers of the oral tradition and understanding of the Argonian origin myths. The Agasafs have very sharp snouts and almost needle-like appearances. They often are bright green to shades of orange. The Archains are one of the most powerful tribes in Argonian history. During the time when Dunmer were enslaving Argonians, the Archains even sold their own people into slavery to make fortunes. 
This tribe was often accountable for affairs involving other nations. However, they eventually went bankrupt when slavery finally ceased in Black Marsh. Copper Eyes were once a tribe in the territory of Merkmire. However, they collapsed after the destruction of the ancient city of Matsatun. Jeevers Leel, otherwise known as the Mire Dancers, are a wise and more religious tribe. They hold a deep-seated connection with the Hiss, and many of its members are sap speakers. Although, many of its members have been prone to gambling and enjoy games. He Teps Leel is a tribe who are talented farmers and harvesters. They particularly make crops for a neighboring tribe for them to use as alchemical ingredients. Kota Vim Leel, also known as the Black Tongues, are a tribe native to Merkmire. They are incredibly talented in the arts of alchemy and are devout worshippers of Sithis. They are even able to alter the time at which eggs hatch to guarantee an Argonian born under the sign of the Shadow. This tribe is arguably the most bountiful of Shadow Skill recruits of any tribe in Black Marsh. Moskins are a tribe native to Merkmire and are centuries long allies of a neighboring tribe of the Brightthroats. They are known for their pacifism and avoidance of conflicts. The Nagakur, or known as the Deadwater Tribe, is a tribe native to Merkmire. This tribe is a subrace of Argonians known as the Nagas. They are told to have huge mouths filled with dripping needle like fangs. They are quite tall compared to the rest of the Argonians, typically standing 7 to 8 feet in height. They're quite hostile to outsiders and utilize the bones and hides of their fallen loved ones to craft their armor and weapons. Naga who fall out of this tribe are often prone to become criminals. The Batu tribe is incredibly toad-like and live in some of the deepest swamps and bogs of Black Marsh. The Tum Talil, or otherwise known as the Root House people, are a tribe native to Merkmire. Self-sufficiency is not their highest aptitude, and often rely on other tribes to sustain themselves. They often are destructive to things given to them, to keep the other tribes continuing in creating things for them. The Sarpa tribe are incredibly mysterious and are described as being winged, although it is not known if this is a metaphor of some sort. They reside in the deepest stretches of Black Marsh. The Susalil tribe are an incredibly peaceful tribe native to Shadowfen. However, they were widely abducted and sold into slavery by other tribes looking for quick money. The Viskliel Tsel, or otherwise known as the Ghost People, are a tribe native to Merkmire. They are noted for their pale and ghostly scales, and even abduct corpses from other tribes to use in necromantic rituals. However, they are unable to reproduce, and the way in which they multiply is by kidnapping other tribes' eggs. The Wasi Khalil, or the Brightthroats tribe, is a tribe native to Merkmire who are noted for their friendliness and welcoming of other races and tribes. They are often enthusiastic and skilled artisans. They are known for their vivid music, dance, and art as talented woodcarvers. The Zitzat tribe of Shadowfen have been driven mad by their rogue and psychotic hist, and are devout and robust warriors. The earliest and foremost residents of Black Marsh are believed to have been the Hist. The Hist are a species of large and sentient trees that grow in Black Marsh. 
It is documented that Black Marsh was actually a much larger territory dominated by the Hist, but mass flooding had molded it into the landmass it is now. The Hist are told to be more ancient than any race on Tamriel. In a book known as the Annotated Anuad, it is said that the Hist were bystanders in the Elnafe War, but most of their realm was destroyed as the war passed over it. A small corner of it survived to become Black Marsh in Tamriel, but most of their realm was sunk beneath the sea. This may refer to the known plane of oblivion that the Hist are native of, and Black Marsh may be in fact a fragment of oblivion that somehow melded with Nern during its early years during the intense war raged by the Elnofe. In traditional Argonian folklore, their souls were given to them by the Hist. Before the Hist, there was nothing. Argonian souls are observed to be much different than that of any other race. Most Argonians in the homeland of Black Marsh all share a unified and collective connection to the Hist, and feel the presence of them in their minds at all times. However, the further one travels from Black Marsh, the weaker this connection gets. Although, some Argonians are even born without the ability to understand and perceive the hiss in their mind, and are unable to understand many Argonian gestures and customs. A common allegory in Argonian folktale is that the hiss found the formation of two-legged and two-armed bodies of the men in Myrrh would be quite useful to the Argonians, and the Hist is told to have formed the Argonians from that construct. The Argonian Mare Glim during the Umbriel Crisis received a vision from the Hist as him as an ordinary lizard. That is, until the roots and sap of the Hist came to him, transforming his very body and mind in this vision. Another theory states that the Hist observed the forms of the mounts of the men and Mare species and created separate forms to be used by the Argonians as well. In some folklore, it is said that the Hist desired to create the Argonians so that they would be able to see the world through their eyes. Where the Hist are stationary beings and cannot walk, an Argonian would be able to travel as far and wide as they'd like, and this was apparently one of the greatest motives into designing the Argonians. The Argonians and the Hist have had a special connection with one another. The Hist as well as the Argonians likely couldn't exist without one another. Licking and consuming the sap of the Hist are a common practice in Argonian customs. Upon birth, an Argonian's gender isn't exactly clear. Their hormones which determine gender appear once they begin licking the sap of the Hist tree after they are out of the juvenile period of their life. Once this occurs, the his sap will stimulate the hormonal glands and they begin developing their designated reproductive organs. Although, some sources state that Argonians' genders are determined upon their hatching. His trees are often coupled with bright bioluminescent flowers on them and some even have incredibly different properties than others. In gel, the Hiss saplings are known as Hiss Deek, a regular adult Hiss is known as Hiss Duka, and the elderly Hiss are known as Hiss Soko. Within the Argonian calendar, the month's names reflect the different life stages of the Hiss. The Hiss are also known to have a deep connection with Sithis, and apparently acknowledge him as the original creator. His speak to each other and to Argonians through strange and mysterious telepathic communications in one large hive mind. Some Hiss have been known to detach themselves from the rest of the others and cut communication for mysterious reasons. Some Hiss are observed to communicate through the wind. One notable tribe had set up a large amount of chimes in order to receive the message of the Hist. Although Argonians are able to hear the Hist telepathically, they can also receive messages visually by licking the sap of one. 
His sap has been observed to mutate organisms, which may bring validity to much of the Argonian origin theories. However, consuming too much of the sap is proven incredibly dangerous even to Argonians. One particular tribe whose bond with the Hist is noted for its strength are known to often suffer the side effects of sap poisoning. This poisoning can induce a variety of symptoms, such as turning the inside of one's mouth golden, thickening and darkening of one's scales, and vivid and dark hallucinations. His sap, when consumed by those who aren't Argonians, can produce even worse symptoms, even with low doses. The hallucinations are tenfold, and will send the consumer into a rage and bloodlust. Although if a tree is abused and treated improperly, its sap can produce a similar effect on Argonians as well. His sap may even determine an Argonian's sexual preference, but very little is known about how this is determined. The area in which Argonians lay their eggs are known as hatching pools. A connection is formed between the hist and the hatchlings. However, if this connection is somehow severed, such as the hist dying or some other phenomenon that would cause such a disconnection, the eggs will die. Normally, this is not the case. However, with the Mimic Egg, a powerful artifact, an Altmer alchemist named Rudavar was able to murder an entire generation of unborn Argonians using this relic. Luckily, the Vestige was able to put an end to this. Despite the Vestige's prevention of many more deaths, the deaths of hundreds in Shadowfen remained. It is possible for an Argonian to be born outside of the province, although this is quite rare. One notable foreign birth of an Argonian was named Ja Reet, who was born into slavery in Morrowind. He was born without a connection to the Hist, and for this reason, suffered many social disadvantages compared to his brethren. He could not understand many of Argonian social cues and Argonian customs. Typically, when an infant Argonian hatches, it begins feeding off of the Hist tree's sap, as most infants would with milk. The Hist sap molds and shapes them into the kind of Argonian they will be as an adult, and supposedly gives the Argonian their soul. To many Argonians, birth and death is the very same instance. In fact, many Argonians believe that life, death, and the rest of all time occurs entirely in one instance, and the idea of the past and the future is of no concern. In Argonian mythos, when an Argonian dies, their souls along with all of their memories are absorbed by the Hist, and when infant Argonians feed from the Hist sap, they in turn gain a new soul, and the soul is said to live on again in a never-ending cycle. It isn't entirely known if this is true or simply folklore to the Argonians, although if this is true, Jarit, born in Morrowind, disconnected from the Hist, would indeed be soulless. When a soul is absorbed by the Hist, the very memories of that soul are said to be sorted, the Hiss chooses to keep the important memories, while the useless or mundane memories are told to get lost in the river's current, otherwise known as the passage of time. It is unknown what happens to an Argonian soul when they die incredibly far from a Hist, whether their soul still travels to the closest Hiss regardless, or if they simply cease to exist, memories and soul lost to the ages. Most, if not all, Argonians worship the Hist in some way or another, and dedicate much of their thought and consultation to their local tree. Hist tree sap is consumed in rituals. Eggs are usually laid along the great roots of the trees, and live entirely according to the Hist desires. Wherever there is a Hist tree, there is surely settlement around that tree, and the locals construct their very lives around their designated tree. Those known as tree minders tend to the hist and seek wisdom and knowledge from the tree. Occasionally, 
The hiss will talk to specifically one individual, though most tree minders can interpret thousands of different signals from the hiss. Some more prominent tribes include an individual known as a sap speaker, who is the sole emissary of the hiss. The sap speaker will spend much of their life directly at the hiss side, drinking the sap, consuming the fruit of the tree, which to anyone else is considered forbidden, and meditating along its roots and canopy. After long durations of intense contemplation and communication with the hiss, they then bring forth the knowledge they gain from the hist. Most Tamrielic pantheons often reflect one another, and some gods can be encountered in different forms across all cultures. However, Argonians do not worship any recognizable deities seen in other cultures, other than the hist and Sithis. Some Argonians state that they do not particularly worship the hist, but perform rituals in honor of the Hist rather than a spiritual worship. Sithis is a deity that the Hist acknowledges, and no other deity has been truly acknowledged by the Hist. Some believe that Zen, or rather Zenithar, a god mostly believed originating from elven cultures, is believed by some to actually have originated in Argonian or even Akaviri mythos, and was merely being introduced to the elves by the Kothringi of Blackmarsh. One religious practice of the Argonians involves something known as entering the Dream Wallow. This is a supposed fine line between reality and falsehood, and is even capable of creating physical objects that didn't previously exist into the mortal plane. Between tribes, the methods of inducing this state of being differ. Typically, it involves prolonged isolation and exposure to stimulating herbs. One tribe enters this state of being by consuming deep sap, his sap that is found deep underground in ancient roots. One Argonian claimed that he and a clam played a game of riddles, where all words of the riddles were orange mud, and in the end, he ate the clam. The Naga also can experience this phenomenon by inhaling the fumes of a burning star blossom, and in their dream wallow, must face a powerful beast known as a Kaju, and must do so alone. One tribe believes that the dream wallow exists because of a clash between two opposing spirits. Originally, there was Atak, the Great Root. As Atok spread and grew, its extending roots grew different names, and desired for their own space to continue growing. Eventually, a serpent spirit known as Kota, who was hungry and born from the nothingness, had encountered Atok. These two spirits clashed with one another, and became a new and individual being known as Atakota. This new being had shed its skin and shadows, and had gone to sleep. Its shadow gnawed at the roots and molded them even further. The secrets told by the shadow altered the roots, allowing further change. Many spirits feared this change, and called it death. The chaos that occurred awoke Arakota, and split Atak and Kota from one another once more. Although a war raged once more between Atak and Kota over the existence of death, some of the smaller roots fed off of Arakota's blood and sap until they began growing scales, fangs, and even wings. Other roots were given protection from a forest spirit and became one with the forest in her songs. In the chaos of everything happening, the shadow eventually woke from its own slumber and consumed Arak and Kota, covering all the roots and protecting them in the process. This long and intricate tale may correlate slightly with other cultures when analyzed deeper, such as a forest spirit of song may allude to a similar being encountered in elven cultures known as Yfrey. The shadow may represent Sithis or even Lorcan in some way or another. Atak and Kota represent Anu and Padame respectively. The roots that desired their own space to grow 
may be aligned to the Daedra creating their own planes, and the separate beings created in the chaos may be the reptilian Argonians and the sentient trees of the Hist. Although this is entirely speculation, and traditional Argonian religious or historical origin stories are incredibly elaborate, and may be considered a stretch for scholars to make correlations. The Shadow Scales greatly venerated Sithis and the Void. In some texts, the collapse of the ancient Argonians was due to their scales becoming darkened by Sithis' touch. Shadow Scales can even serve as a sort of law enforcement in Black Marsh. However, by the 4th era 201, it is believed that the Shadow Scales are no longer a functioning operation in Black Marsh. Some Argonians, notably ones living outside of Black Marsh, will learn to embrace more foreign religions, such as worship of the Divines. However, as most staunch worshippers of the Divines would likely be sent to the Plains of the Divines upon death, it is unknown if this is still the case for a staunch worshipper that is also Argonian, whether the Hist rightly claims their soul as normal, or if they instead are sent to their respected Divine's plane upon death. Apparently, during the Merethic era, while much of Tamriel had only been just discovering their new lands and future home, the ancient Argonians were told to already have been established and well in power in Black Marsh for ages. This is evident of the ancient and complex ruins of the large stone ziggurats called Zanmirs. These ruins are quite plentiful and large, and even exist in some territories in southern Morwind. The early documentations of Argonians state that they were well known for their powerful defensive magic that when placed on their structures, this magic was known to last for thousands of years, even well into the Second Era. The technique to how these structures were made, and what exactly they were used for, have largely been lost to history. One of the main deities of Argonian mythos that they revere is Sithis. Sithis is both feared and loved by the Argonians, believing him to be an unstoppable powerful force that required sacrifice. It is believed that Sithis may have been involved in the creation and possible destruction of this ancient civilization. The stark difference between the advanced stonework as portrayed in these Anmirs compared to modern simple mud huts of the Argonians led many scholars to believe that Zanmirs may not have been constructed by the Argonians at all, and believe that the Argonians claimed ownership of them, as no one knows exactly who or what built them. These structures remain mysterious even to the Argonians. Modern-day Argonians believe that the construction of these powerful stone temples and the devotion to Sithis is a part of an ancient yet flawed belief system as this worship only saw Sithis as a destroyer rather than a creator as well. The mysterious event that caused the collapse of this ancient and unknown civilization has become known as Duskfall. While some scholars who study this event feel remorse for this ancient civilization and what may have happened to cause their disappearance, most Argonians see it as an end to a society that once was and nothing more. Other than Sithis likely having been responsible for its destruction, some believe it was the Aelids who were in fact responsible for the destruction of this powerful ancient society. Regardless, the Zanmirs had eventually been abandoned, and even the earliest Argonian documents can't recall why. When the Aldmer first began exploring Tamriel, the Argonians were well situated and a large civilization in Blackmarsh at the time. However, the more advanced and magically inclined elves had enough power to drive them deeper into the swamps of Blackmarsh. During this time, Argonians were not the only ones inhabiting Blackmarsh. In fact, 
Black Marsh was home to some of the most varied amounts of races on Tamriel, including a number of human tribes, such as the Kotharingi, Orma, Horwali, and the Yespest, an ancient civilization of Mer known as the Cantemiric Velothi, a strain of aliens known as the Barsabic aliens, and another extinct beast race known as the Lilmathit. In the earlier eras of Tamriel, Argonians weren't often seen outside of the province as much as other races. Although the Dunmer are known for enslaving much of the Argonian population throughout the eras, even long before the Dunmer, the Chimer had been enslaving the Argonians since they set foot in Morwind. In the early years of the First Era was when some Argonians decided to explore outside of Black Marsh and into the rest of Tamriel. But most of them merely assimilated into other cultures, and brought little of their own culture to these new cultures that they discovered. Throughout the eras, the Argonians of Black Marsh began to despise outsiders, mostly due to criminals escaping to Black Marsh to avoid imperial law. The most western sections of Black Marsh and the Topol Bay had become corrupt and hazardous, largely due to the pirating and crime that occurred here. The head and forefront of this criminal activity was an individual known as Red Brahmin. In the First Era 1033, Empress Hestra had ordered for the Red Brahmin's beheading, and after this was carried out after trekking into Black Marsh, the Argonians grew to despise the races outside of Black Marsh after the conflict, violence, and criminal activity was caused by them. Despite this, the Argonians still held an alliance with the Empire, and aided them when the Thracian Plague had ravaged Tamriel in the First Era 2200. The Argonians had joined alongside many nations of Tamriel in the All Flags Navy against the Slode of Thras, the originators of this deadly plague. This is said to be one of the greatest naval achievements of the races of Tamriel, after Thras was supposedly sunken into the bottom of the Sea of Pearls, although it had later resurfaced. The Alessian Empire had never conquered Black Marsh. However, the Riemann dynasty held great interest in claiming the province for the Empire. In the First Era 2011, the conquest of Black Marsh was a success, as the last of their armies had been destroyed. After the Battle of Argonia and their defeat, the Argonians retreated further into the deepest reaches of Black Marsh, in which the Imperial victors could not pursue. Because of this, Black Marsh remained widely out of Imperial control. Riemann II desired to fully conquer Black Marsh as well as Morwind. After this attempt in the First Era 2837, he lost just about as many men to the deadly swamp landscape as he did in the war against the Argonians. Eventually, the northern and eastern sections of Black Marsh had been conquered. Black Marsh became a province dedicated as a sort of prison state, in which only the highest profile and dangerous criminals would be sent to to prevent their escape. After Riemann III had been assassinated along with the only heir, the Akaviri Siasian potentate had claimed the throne in the beginning of the Second Era. No longer under organized imperial rule, the Argonians of Black Marsh used this as a chance to secede and became a once again sovereign nation under full Argonian rule. However, without the help of imperial protection, the Dunmer of Morwind quickly turned their gaze to the Argonians, a land ripe with slaves. It is said that entire tribes and cities were captured by the Dunmer, dragged in chains to Morwind, and carried out their lives as slaves in locations such as Stonefalls, Vardenfell, and the Deshaun Plains. The Great House of Dress of the Dunmer were largely responsible for this and were prominent slave owners of the Argonians as well as the Khajiit. Thothil Dress, who carried out numerous grand-scale slave raids on Black Marsh, 
became the progenitor of slavery of the Argonian peoples. While Morrowind began an economic boom and upbringing, due to the amount of slave work, Blackmarsh and the Argonians detested the Dunmary people, and this continuous flow of slaves from the nation has ignited centuries-long conflicts and an everlasting resentment towards their northern neighbors. The fatal Nahatan flu is often considered by historians to have originated in Blackmarsh and spread by the Argonians in the Second Era 560. While the disease did originate in Stormhold in Blackmarsh, Argonians are understood to be completely immune to the disease, and whether or not it spread because of Argonians has yet to be completely proven. It is unknown what truly ignited the deadly Nahatan flu, whether it came from a natural cause or crafted by an Argonian shaman in anger of how his people have been treated throughout these centuries. Except, this flu exacerbated the harsh opinion from other races against the Argonians after it spread through Tamriel like fire, and the slave masters in Morrowind found it increasingly difficult to sell their slaves. This topic is still a mystery to modern scholars. Regardless, the disease did spawn in Stormhold in the Second Era 560, spreading all across Blackmarsh. Although the Argonians were not infected, any other mortals living in Blackmarsh were quickly wiped out by this disease. Entire cultures and peoples were destroyed, notably the remaining human natives such as the Kotharingi, Orma, Horwali, and the Yespest, along with the native beast folk, the Lilmethit. Even after the disease had finally disappeared, the devastation of it kept many outsiders away from the province out of fear of getting it once again. However, a decade later, Blackmarsh took an unexpected alliance with their most hated enemy, the Liberation War that took place in the Second Era 572 saw an alliance created between Morrowind, Blackmarsh, and Skyrim after the Second Akaviri invasion struck Tamriel. The Kamal leader Adasum Dir Kamal led his invasion against Tamriel, beginning with a bloody march from Windhelm into Morrowind. Yorun, the Scald King of Skyrim, Wolfharth, the Ash King, and Amalexia had fought against the forces of the Kamal. With these combined efforts, they were able to fend off the invasion into the Patamaic Ocean. However, this was not the last of the Akaviri invasion, and there was more to come from the Kamal on a soon arriving ship from Akavir, and the combined Tamrielic forces believed it was their doom. Where the Argonians stepped in began with an Argonian slave girl named Hetamin. Prior to this invasion, she had escaped her slave masters on her plantation. However, she was recaptured and taken back. It was then that she received a vision from her town's designated history. This vision showed her the Nordic and Dunmary forces perishing by the hands of the Kamal. When she returned, she killed her slave master and even gained control of the guards. She retreated to Stormhold and was able to gain the support of the residents. With this combined force, they headed north to aid the Dunmer and Nords in Stonefalls. Initially, with the arrival of an army of Argonians, the Dunmer believed that because of the chaos, the Argonians took advantage to attack their age-old enemies and slave masters, and believed this truly spelled their doom. Some of the Dunmary forces immediately attacked the Argonians in this belief. However, it was the exact opposite case, and with the now combined forces of the Nords, Dunmer, and Argonians, they were truly able to defeat the powerful Kamal invaders, and once again drove them into the sea to drown. This gave birth to the Ebonheart Pact, and this pact played a vital role in the Plainmeld and the Alliance War around a decade later. Because of the much-needed help that the Argonians had provided during the Akaviri invasion, the Dunmer officially ended the enslavement of Argonians. However, slavery still existed in practice in Morrowind, 
largely still with the Khajiit. However, House Telvanni did not agree with this pact and refused to sign it. The agreement seemed all in well. However, not all of Black Marsh even sided with the Ebonheart Pact. Only the Shadowfen, Thornmarsh, and Merkmire territories of Black Marsh had sided with the pact. This caused a mass migration of Argonians to reside in other provinces, whereas before Argonians outside of Black Marsh were quite rare. Other than the plain meld and the war occurring during this time, one anomaly that the Ebonheart Pact had to worry about was the phenomenon known as the Nemic Egg. The Nemic Egg was a powerful artifact that was the result of the manifestation of the link between the Hist and the Argonians. If this egg is destroyed, it would prove fatal to all Hist and all Argonians. The Aldemary Dominion took interest in this egg, and even tried to sever the link between the Argonians and the Hist. However, the Vestige was able to prevent this catastrophe to occur in full. After the plane meld and the Alliance War ceased, it is unknown what happened to the Ebonheart Pact, as by the time that Tiber Septim began conquering Tamriel, the Pact was no longer in existence, and Argonians had once again been in control of their nation. Eventually, Morrowind began enslaving the Argonians once again. Although the rest of Tamriel remembered the fear of Black Marsh, its harsh jungles and marshes filled with disease. Tiber Septim was even hesitant to attack Black Marsh, and many accounts tell of Black Marsh being gained entirely by treaty instead. Before this treaty, Septim's forces were even having trouble on the outermost edges of Black Marsh, and he had avoided a large loss of his troops by averting the deepest and deadliest swamps of Black Marsh. Regardless, after the Second Treaty of Stros Mackay, Black Marsh was gained as a nation of the ever-expanding empire of Tiber Septim. In the Third Era, most of Black Marsh had been ceded to the empire, and the province continued to act as a sort of prison state for Tamriel, with the exception of its innermost reaches such as Hellstrom. This area is known as Mirkwood and makes up the very heart of Black Marsh. It is said to be nearly impossible for non-Argonians to trek to this area because of the hostility of the jungles and swamps. This area is known to be the most opposed to outsiders, and especially Imperial control. In the innermost swamps of Black Marsh, it is believed that its Argonian citizens are even unaware of the outside world or recognized Imperial rule. During the Imperial Simulacrum in the Third Era 396, a slave revolt ignited the Arnesian War between Morrowind and Black Marsh. However, Morrowind were the victors of this war and absorbed a large amount of northern territory of Black Marsh, along with a slew of new Argonian slaves. Despite slavery being illegal in the Empire and countries governed by the Empire, Morrowind was exempt from this law under favorable conditions of the Armistice when Morrowind joined the Septim Dynasty. It was until the reign of King Helseth that slavery was finally abolished in Morrowind. With this final abolishment, the relationship between the Dunmer and the Argonians greatly improved. However, in post of this war, the attempts to regain lost territory continued in southern Morrowind. Black Marsh saw one of its greatest feats during a time when the rest of Tamriel was suffering. When the Oblivion Crisis hit Tamriel, the nations of the continent were in chaos, with entire towns and peoples being slaughtered by the never-ending hordes of Daedra. However, Black Marsh was prepared for this event. His trees called in Argonians from across Tamriel to defend their homeland. The Hiss were able to prepare the Argonians with added strength, speed, and endurance. Once the gates opened in Black Marsh, they had flooded the gates with such force that the Daedra were overwhelmed and were forced to withdraw immediately. 
While after the Oblivion Crisis, the rest of Tamriel were crippled and distraught, the Argonians of Black Marsh were more powerful than they had ever likely been in history, with this victory against the Daedra. As the Empire was severely weakened, the Argonians immediately seceded, and shortly thereafter the Khajiit did as well. After the eruption of Red Mountain had destroyed large portions of Morrowind, the Argonians seized this opportunity to attack their age-old enemies. It is believed that the Thalmor convinced the Argonian people to do this, and were easily swayed due to the centuries of conflict between the nations that had occurred. The Argonians had much success with this invasion, and even the city of Mornhold had been completely sacked. However, House Redoran of the North Territories of Morrowind were able to combat against the Argonians, and drove them further south once again. The Thalmor and the Argonians cut contact as well, and the current affairs and impact of this invasion is largely unknown. The Great Argonian Invasion against Morwind in the Fourth Era became known as the Accession War. Despite their great hatred to Morwind and the Dunmer, they seemed neutral to the ongoing war and tension going on between the Empire and the Aldermary Dominion. In the early Fourth Era, a nationalistic and militant political party known as the Anzalil had taken control of Black Marsh. The Anzalil comprised of several powerful clans and tribes, notably the Scalesong clan. Their views were so militant that by the Fourth Era 43, they were able to call upon a rogue Hist tree in Lilmouth to contact the age-old cousins of the Hist, trees that happened to reside in Clavicus Vile's realm in Oblivion. A large chunk and portion of Clavicus Vile's realm had teleported to Tamriel, known as Umbriel. The Anzalil summoned this large floating city to eliminate all traces of foreign taint on Black Marsh. However, the Anzalil lost control over this floating city from Oblivion, and it began absorbing souls from all across Black Marsh, Morrowind, and later into Cyrodiil. Although, with the help of a Breton woman named Anayi Coinart, an Argonian named Mare Glim, Prince Atribus Mead, and a Dunmary mage named Sul, they were able to finally put a stop to Umbriel, and this catastrophe had come to an end. In much of the latter parts of the Fourth Era, the Argonians of Black Marsh remained relatively quiet and secluded from the rest of Tamriel. In the fourth era, when 50, a group of Argonians landed on Solstheim to cause trouble, but were easily driven back by the veteran forces that lived in the city of Ravenrock. During the Dragon Crisis, a document surfaced that discussed an Argonian king and the Anzalil. It is widely rumored that the Anzalil, despite the cataclysmic events of the Umbriel Crisis, had survived well into the fourth era. A member of the Thieves' Guild even mentioned the Argonian patrols that were in southern Morrowind, suggesting that they are still quite prominent in that area. Very little is known of modern Argonian culture. With the isolationism of the Argonians mixed with the very hostile terrain of Black Marsh, fuels this mystery. It is known that the Hiz still play a vital role in the society of the Argonians, yet whether Black Marsh is facing a multitude of internal problems or not is unknown. However, it isn't likely given their success with the Oblivion Crisis and their success with taking a large portion of Southern Morrowind. The future of the Argonians of Black Marsh is unclear. Although, one can assume that there will be further contentions between Black Marsh and Morwind, it is yet unknown what true power the Hist hold over the Argonian people. With the looming horizon of a possible Second Great War, it is safe to assume that Black Marsh may even be involved, and currently may even be considered one of the most powerful provinces as of the Fourth Era 201.